Welcome into the film room, guys. I'm Jake Ellenbogen, and today we're going to be covering Notre Dame running back Kyron Williams, the rookie running back headed to the LA Rams. We're going to be discussing what he does well, what he needs to improve on, and what his overall role will be with the Rams. Before we get into it, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment if you enjoy this video. Also, as I always say now when it comes to film room, there's a very good chance this will be demonetized. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not the next day, but it will at some point. Because of that, I will not be making much money off this. So if you do want to support the channel, you don't have to. But if you do further, you can leave a super thanks hitting the heart icon below, or you can donate over at my Venmo, JK Bogan. Without further ado, this is the Kyra Williams je film room it's a long-awaited one and i'm excited to dive in so let's get started all right so we're kicking the things off here against florida state and you know i think uh, this is this is a really good game uh from kyron williams and you know just really showing off his ability as you see here yeah you might want to not slow down there he does get tackled from behind but you know this is somebody that i think is definitely going to have an impact immediately in the nfl 21 years old, uh, 465 40 is his real biggest concern, as people would say. Uh, but what you're going to notice throughout this video is that Kyron Williams does a lot of things very well and actually at a rare level, uh, mainly his pass protection, as you've probably heard before. He was a class five offensive player of the year uh, coming out in Missouri, and he went to Notre Dame, barely played his freshman year. Um, you know, he cut off 15 pounds of weight added more quickness to his game sophomore 2020 uh you know freshman all america um freshman of the year finalist all acc second team running back acc rookie of the year and acc offensive rookie of the year in his 2021 season he was a team captain a paul horning uh, award finalist which goes to the most versatile player in college football he had 204 carries in college 1,002 yards, 14 touchdowns, plus 42 receptions, 359 yards, and three touchdowns last season. He stands at 5'9", 194. Again, this guy was deemed undersized and slow. It's why he fell to the fifth round in the NFL draft. And he suffered from inconsistent run blocking, which you're going to notice uh, as much as, you know, as talented as the Notre Dame offense is. It is not fair to just say, well, you know, he had Notre Dame blocking and go off that. Because as you're going to see, there's a lot of physicality that comes with Kyron Williams and the package that he brings. And there's a lot of help that he's going to bring in pass pro. The Notre Dame offensive line, and they've had some really good offensive linemen, but I came away pretty disappointed in a lot of the the lack of running lanes, as this is not one of them, but there was a, there was a lot of, uh, you know, the lack of running lanes for Kyron Williams. He had to create yardage. He's not Cam Akers in that regard. He's not Daryl Henderson, but he is solid in doing that. Um, again, pass protecting is, is something that he is very, very good at, very well versed in. Uh, so that is something right off the bat. You just, you can tell he's just a rare dude when it comes to that. But uh, he's very tough. You know, the competition he went up against, uh, you know, really put him against some of the best of the best in college. And, you know, I came away thinking this guy can be a workhorse in the league. I understand, okay, he's going to have his concentration drop here. He's going to get tackled a little bit early on, maybe not break the, you know, every single tackle. Uh, he is a little smaller. You know, he's not the fastest back, but he can be a true workhorse back in this league. And we've seen guys like LeGarrette Blount that, you know, aren't necessarily the fastest, but still made an impact in the league. It was a really nice run by him there. But, you know, this is a wide stride, you know, runner. Um, you know, I think he does need to improve his elusiveness, uh, at least laterally. And I don't really know how he'll go about doing that. But, you know, he's just he's not the most explosive. I I'll say that right now. And that's OK. But he's got wiggle. And I think it's going to allow him in tight situations, which you'll notice right there. Uh, nice, really one cut there. Um, you know, he's going to be able to get by. And I think that was something that I really liked watching his film, his ability to, you know, this is a tough situation. OK, I'm going to wiggle out of, uh, you know, harm's way and, and just show a little bit of movement there, you know, just kind of creating some yards that just simply aren't there. Um, he's willing to and he's an experienced 
uh, route runner from the backfield slot and outside the numbers. Now, uh, this is what I put on my scouting report because I came away really impressed with him as a route runner. He is also a former wide receiver, so I do have to point that out. He did play wide receiver in high school, and you can definitely see that. Now, how is he this good as a uh, as a pass protector? How is he this willing? I don't really know. Um, it, it just, you know, hard work, dedication, and just clearly just being very coachable and wanting to get better at every level of his game. So I think that's more of a Kyron Williams thing than a, you know, a personal background like he had with wide receiver. Again, shows a lot of polish as a route runner. Um, you know, he's shifty. He has quick twitch ability. Uh, that's going to allow him to create separation, uh, you know, on those routes. Very rare pass protector. Uh, just came away. Super, super excited, you know, when the Rams got him for this reason. Because right now, the Rams, you know, they have Daryl Henderson, and he's one of the best pass protectors, one of the most underrated pass protectors in the league because everyone looks at his 5'8 frame and just assumes he can't pass block. Well, he can. And so, you know, when you look at Kyron Williams, now the Rams have two really good pass protectors. And those are typically guys that you want to keep on the field on third down when you're likely going to pass the ball. Um, you know, I think that's a big thing to have. And I think that's a big reason why the Rams wanted him so badly. Uh, they did trade up to get him. And I think it made a lot of sense when it happened. It makes even more sense after going through and really dissecting his film. Typically, I watch three games for each player that I can in every draft. And if I have to, I'll watch more. But after a player is drafted to, say, the Rams and, you know, covering the Rams, I'm able to really dive in and look at all the games. And we have a bunch of games here, maybe six or seven for Kyron Williams in this one. You know, he's going up against Clemson in this one. Uh, a lot of people say this is the best game he played in. I don't know. Um, I think it was pretty good. I think it was definitely good as far as, you know, really dissecting his game and, and just how much he was utilized in, you know, pass pro and, you know, the receiving game. So I think that's definitely important there. It shows you his versatility and his ability, uh, especially against, you know, good competition. He's tenacious, though, in the fact that he's going to scan and process the field for incoming blitz packages and, uh, you know, pickups. And, and I think this is, you know, just one of those guys that, you know, you can't really coach things like that. I mean, you can, but to a degree, you want to see ownership. And, you know, I've talked about before the idea, like if a prospect meets a coach in the middle, that prospect can really thrive, can really take the next level. And what you find when it comes to Kyron Williams is that, he goes above and beyond the next level. He goes above and beyond the halfway point. Um, he doesn't believe in meeting a coach in the middle. He believes in doing more. Uh, as you see, huge block there. And I'm going to highlight this right now. Kyron Williams, you'll see him get right there in the face of pressure. Boom. Just beautiful. Just puts him right on his butt. And you're going to see that a lot. Where Kyron Williams is playing, you know, like this is wrestling here. You know, it's, it's like he's really pinning the guy to the ground. And he does it against defensive linemen. He does it against linebackers. He does it against corners. It does not matter who is coming at him, who's coming at his quarterback. He's going to try and at least put the best uh, possible, uh, you know, protection for his quarterback. And I mean, I saw it, whether it was Ian Book or Jack Cohn, uh, he is really just a willing pass protector. And I think that's going to be huge for the future, you know, with Matthew Stafford and, you know, whoever uh, ends up playing quarterback after him. I think Kyron is definitely a guy that the Rams are going to want to keep around for a long time because of that. And so that is just something like, I can't stress enough how rare his not even just the pass protecting you know the element to his game not even how good he is in that realm but just how rare it is to see a guy be that willing to throw his face in there Th look again boom he just rips that guy down takes him down like a you know body slam you just see that so much and yeah he's gonna miss a couple of those because he is 5'9 but he does know how to use his size he knows leverage he, you know, has good balance in pass pro. Now, what you just saw there is a fumble. And the biggest concern I came away with with uh, Kyron Williams is not his uh, lack of speed. Um, it's not his health. It's not anything like that. He, my biggest concern are the fumbles, the ball security. Um, you know, he tends to leave the ball open, you know, for a big hit. And I think when he's making, a, you know, a cut in traffic, he had eight fumbles in his career. He's got to cut that down. 
Um, you know, he only played two full seasons at Notre Dame. And so to have eight fumbles, that's four a season. That's a little too much there. Uh, as you see, we move on to the Pittsburgh game. Again, I think he can clean that up, and I think it's something that can be worked on. I think with NFL coaching, he's going to get better at, but I did have to highlight that concern because I didn't really realize it when I watched those three, four games uh, you know, in depth going into the uh, draft season. But when I came away, like that was beautiful there. But when I came away you know, with Kyron Williams, it's just I definitely feel like that ball security is something that could derail a guy that could be on the field every single down if they needed him to. But as soon as he starts fumbling the ball, the Rams still have Jake Funk, who they got in the seventh round, who they like. The Rams still have, uh, you know, obviously Daryl Henderson and Cam Akers. So if this guy's going to take snaps away from those three that they've all drafted, as well as Kyron Williams, he's going to take away those snaps. He needs to get the most out of that. And if he's fumbling the ball, he's going to put himself behind the eight ball. And of course, we also have another guy that fumbles the ball quite a bit. That is Cam Akers. So the Rams have not been afraid to go after a guy that has had ball security struggles. The hope is, you know, he's going to get better in the NFL. And I think he will. But that is something I had to you know point out. I know we're already on to the next game. Um, not really going too much into each play. Just really showing it to you while I talk and, you know, about like what I've learned. And I'll highlight different things. But, you know, it's definitely something that came out. Uh, you know, while watching it, it's something that I had to highlight. I'm going to be real with you guys. I'm not going to sit here and you guys know I love. He was my running back number four in this draft. I absolutely love Kyron Williams and his versatility. You see him there running a route. Didn't get thrown to, but shows you the ability that he can do it. Um, you know, there's another nice uh, pickup um, from Kyron Williams in pass pro. But, you know, that's the thing. And I'm going to highlight things, even though I love this player, I'm going to tell you what he's good at when he's what he needs to improve on. Okay, that that's just the way it is. So his ball security needs to be improved. Um, but aside from that, you know, I don't have too many deep concerns. I think he obviously he doesn't have a great deal of burst, and when he's trying to get to the outside, it is a little bit of a a problem. Um, you know, he's done it before, and yes, you know, you instantly think of the UNC game, which surprisingly I don't have. Uh, I did not have that on all 22. Uh, but everyone knows that UNC run where he goes to the left, gets the outside, and houses the, uh, you know, houses it to the end zone. I don't have that game, but you know what I'm talking about. It does kind of show you that he can run by guys, but I think in the NFL that is going to be a concern where, you know, if he's running from the far hash and running the outside and trying to turn a corner, he doesn't have the burst to get to that level. So if that is how the Rams use him, it's not going to be good. I don't think the Rams are going to use him that way though. Um, I think they're going to go, you know, probably inside, uh, you know, a few of those inside zone runs and use him, you know, as a weapon, you know, a Swiss army knife, if you will, as a receiver, uh, as a guy that can help you in pass pro and, uh, you know, line up as a slot outside in the backfield. That's how I see him being used. Not as a guy that is going to try to constantly get to the outside because he's not going to win that way. He needs to, you know, pick his you know, poise. He needs to, you know, find his way and his method of doing things. And that's how it has to be done. It's the same thing with the Rams. They got to find their way of doing things with him and utilize him to the best of his ability. Obviously the top acceleration is another concern, but not a huge concern with me. You know, I, I don't think the Rams have a home run threat. Cam Akers does get tackled uh, from behind. He is fast. I'm not saying he's not, but it's not like Tyreek Hill, who's just gone once he has the ball and he's in space and like he's just gone the rams don't have that and that's okay not many teams do have that type of speed like a jonathan taylor for instance that you just are, he's gone once he gets past the second level um but kyron williams is not going to be any different than the other two he's not going to have that long speed he's not going to be gone uh he is going to be tackled from behind and that's okay um you see a nice pickup there and you know honestly good pocket presence from book but um you know, just talking about that, uh, you know, and I will say this, another thing, and, and this is kind of picky because, again, this guy doesn't have many cons. He's got a lot of pros. He's got a lot of things going for him. Doesn't have many cons to his game. Another thing I'll add is that he is not the most elusive after the catch. And what I mean by that is you'll see guys, they'll shed tackles and things like that. They're, they're huge run, you know, running after the catch. We see it all the time, yards after the catch. Yak guys like Cooper Cup, you know, I mean, he's not 
that, obviously. And he's a running back, so he shouldn't be that. But, I mean, I wouldn't say he's Austin Eckler. I wouldn't say he's, you know... I, I wouldn't say he's J.D. McKissick either. Uh, he does... He catches the ball. He gets some yards. He's not a guy that's going to, you know, make a bunch of guys miss. He's a guy that will break tackles. But I think he's better as a runner breaking tackles than he is, you know, catching the ball. I did notice that. He is a good receiver, but I don't think he's as elusive after the catch, and I did notice that. Um, you know, again, going back, slippery in space. He's also powerful enough to break tackles and get to the second level. Now, what I mean by getting to the second level is getting to the defensive backs, not necessarily housing, you know, for a touchdown, not taking it the distance. He did that sometimes in college, and then you will see that. But in the NFL, you have to assume that he's not going to be doing that in the NFL. Guys are faster, quicker, stronger. Just don't see that. He's got a nose for the end zone. Um, this is somebody, again, he had 14 touchdowns rushing, three touchdowns receiving, 17 on the year his last year at Notre Dame. He has a nose for the end zone. I think that's very important. It's something the Rams are lacking. It's something the Rams need. I think Cam Akers doesn't have that. And I know that's hard to hear because, you know, Cam Akers is the number one running back in LA and, you know, he is a fan favorite, but I'm going to be real with you. Cam Akers fumbled, you know, a bunch of times, uh, twice actually in the divisional round against Tampa. Um, he fumbled at the goal line against Arizona when the John Wolford game was in session and the Rams had to win to make the playoffs. He fumbled at the goal line. Um, so he didn't get the touchdowns at the one he fumbled. He's had an issue with fumbles, but he's had an issue not getting in the end zone. Daryl Henderson does have a nose for the end zone, but not quite on the level that we've seen with, say, Todd Gurley. I do think Kyron Williams, you either have or you don't. I think watching Kyron Williams, this is somebody that is not afraid to, you know, punch that ball into the end zone. I think what you find is that he uses his body well to kind of contort in between, uh, you know, guards and in the center, um, obviously at the goal line. I think he also has some sneaky ability when he's getting around the edge, especially at the goal line. And he knows he has the wherewithal to uh, basically throw that ball right at the pylon and, and put, you know, the ball on the pylon and reach out and try to make a play. And I think that's something that I noticed uh, pretty early on that, you know, Kyron Williams is going to try and score. It's not saying that Cam Akers isn't going to try, but he has struggled in that regard. And that's something I have to bring up. Having a nose for the end zone is something that's just not like a gimme for a running back. And as you see there, really nice uh, broken tackle against Cincinnati uh, by Kyron Williams. But again, you know, nose for the end zone. You love to see that. You have the experience. He scored 17 touchdowns his last season. Uh, you have to hope that, you know, comes with him to the Rams. And I think he's going to be a lot better as a pro. It's not to say he was bad as a uh, college player. And I understand the stats, right? You, you hear the stats and you're like, wait a minute. You think he's going to be better than 1,000 yards, 17 touchdowns? The, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying he was utilized, you know, I think he was utilized decently, but I don't think he had the best offensive line. And I think that held him back, if I'm being honest. I think with the Rams, they're going to have a better approach. I think they're going to throw the ball more than ever. Um, as you see him, there you go, diving for the end zone. I think they're going to throw the ball more than ever with Liam Cohen there. I think they're going to be more pass happy, but I do think it's going to open up opportunity in the run game. They were 24th in the league last year in run, uh, in the, you know, running the ball. The year before, they were 10th. I think that they're going to be probably in the middle of that, maybe around 16th, 17th. Uh, you know, who knows? I think probably around that. I don't think they'll be super good. Um, I think they have, they got a lot of talent. I just don't think they're going to run the ball enough to be in the top 10 like they were with Jared Goff in 2020. When you have Matthew Stafford, you don't have to run it that much. But I do think he's going to help. And I think him being in that room is going to, you know, put some pressure on the guys ahead of him. Um, I mean, if, you know, Cam Akers sees him going out there and being that successful in pass pro, Hopefully that applies some pressure. Cam Akers, you know, he'll get better in pass protection, things like that. Um, but he does do a good job, by the way, of creating yards that aren't there. He's not on the level of Cam Akers, who I think does an incredible job of creating yards that aren't there. Just like I said, yard creator. But, you know, Kyron Williams is pretty solid in that as well. And I think, you know, Daryl Henderson is as well. So I think all three of these backs are going to complement each other well. 
I think this is another guy you hear fans a lot trying to say, you know, this guy needs to finish forward, fall forward, you know, go forward, get those yards, get the extra yards. One, two yards can be the difference, you know, between a third and four and a third and two can be a difference between a fourth and one and, you know, a first down conversion, you know, things like that. So I do think you'll like that about Kyron Williams as he does tend to fall forward. He tries to, you know, push himself forward, extend the ball a little bit. Um, you, you are going to notice that he maybe even dives a little bit forward, uh, is okay going down at the first sign of contact if he can get forward. But, um, you know, I think you're still going to like his, his ability to, to create yards, his ability to break tackles. But when he does get tackled or when he does get pushed or he does take a hit, he's trying to fall forward and get those extra yards, which you like. He's also patient. He's not Le'Veon Bell level, who's probably the most patient runner I've ever seen, uh, but he is patient. You know, he's not somebody that's necessarily going to dance around the backfield and do nothing, but I think he's very smart in, you know, his footwork and the way he, he moves. So um, I think his patience is a good thing. And, you know, I, I'm a fan of it, honestly. I'm a fan of, like, just the way he runs. I like the way he dissects everything. And also, one thing I really like is he stayed healthy all throughout college. And again, he's not a four year starter, he didn't have 800 touches, like, say, uh, you know, um, the guy from Iowa State, whose name is totally escaping me, uh, Brees Hall. There we go. Uh, Brees Hall had 800 touches, okay? Kyron did not have that. He had less than 500. So that's a good thing. That is a plus. He doesn't have a ton of tread on his tires. That's a good thing to have, right? But the thing that is so impressive to me is that Kyron Williams is playing a different game than most of these running backs. I was not seeing the physicality in any of these running backs, the level that I was seeing it out of Kyron Williams. I mean, we're talking every time that they're in the shotgun. And if he doesn't take the carry, he has to hit somebody. He can't be in pass pro and not hit somebody. Even if it's not even necessary, he's trying to lay a hit. He's trying to help an offensive lineman get the better of somebody with that leverage. Okay, so that is something that I found really impressive is that his ability to stay healthy, the usage, the level of physicality he was playing at. That is something that's going to go a long way because it shows you that his ability, uh, you know, he's going to be at the next level and he's going to be able to play at the level that he's playing at at the next level without having to worry about injuries because he's not getting injuries from this. He's getting hurt, no doubt. He's getting back to the locker room. He's like, okay, my arm looks purple. I mean, I'm sure you're getting bruises left and right, but playing at that level and not being the biggest, you know, running back, it's very impressive and it's something that needs to be given credit for because. You know, he has done a really nice job throughout his college career, and now he's coming here. I think he's going to have a significant role with the Rams, maybe not immediately out of the gate, but don't be surprised that at the end of the season, you're looking at maybe a, a three-back committee approach, and he started to make this thing a little bit more of a timeshare than what many people are thinking. A lot of people think Cam Akers is going to run away with the running back room. I think they're going to use all three in the way that will best fit them, and so that's what I'm excited about. The Rams roll. Let's talk about it. We talked about, you know, the scouting report that I had here. Uh, we talked about, you know, his past, his, uh, you know, obviously everyone knows he's a Rams fan growing up. Huge Steven Jackson fan. He's going to wear 23 and not 39. Appreciate that. Trying to carve his own path. Uh, you know, wearing 23 that was originally worn by Cam Akers who switches to three. But this is my uh, envision for him for the Rams roll. Early on, I think he will be a vi he will be in a very similar role as the one he had at Notre Dame. I think he's going to split time. He you know he's going to split time in a committee with Akers and Henderson, very similar to the way he split time with Chris Tyree at Notre Dame. Uh, Chris Tyree, for those of you who don't know, he's been number twenty five in this video. He's shown up a little bit, but I'm not going to put him in videos that Kyron Williams isn't like in on that play uh so when they do run that two back set which i'm hoping the rams do take some of this uh you know content and they they're like all right hey we got to run our own two back set we got enough talent to do it um that's the 25 that i'm talking about number 25 chris tyree uh i think he will eventually have a role um you know a, a bigger role but i think he initially is going to split time with acres and henderson and i think he could be like a mark ingram or, or austin eckler um, I understand how that sounds and I understand, you know, fifth round running back. Typically speaking though, like you're getting running backs everywhere. Austin Eckler was a UDFA. 
I think this guy has what it takes to be in the NFL for a long time, be productive. When you see running backs that aren't about themselves, as you see him housing that touchdown, beautiful. When you see running backs that aren't about themselves, are willing to work and do the extra thing to get to that next level and improve their play. It just tells you that this guy's going to be around for a while. Running backs typically don't last a long time. He's 21, so I think he's got at least nine years in the league. Um, just the level of, you know, just the level of effort he puts in every single game. You see him still throwing blocks at the end of this game. Like, this is what I'm talking about. And so for me, coming away from it, you know, Kyron Williams is a guy that is going to be around for a long time. Um, I, I, he could absolutely become a starter one day. You know, he could be the RB1 for the Rams. After Cam Akers' contract, after Daryl Henderson, he could very well turn into the RB1. Um, Austin Eckler, he's not anywhere near as fast as. He projects really well to Mark Ingram. He's not as big, like, as far as the, the weight he has on him. He did lose 15 pounds, keep in mind, to add that, you know, that level of elusiveness uh, that he added, the quickness to his game. But what is very important here is that everything else pretty much matches up with Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram hasn't really been a starting running back. He's been a very, very good, uh, you know, change of pace uh, with Alvin Kamara, who he's with now. And I think that's a good, you know, barometer of where you could see Kyron Williams if the Rams don't bring back Daryl Henderson you could see Kyra Williams and Cam Akers kind of working off each other as a one-two punch. Um, you could still see that even if they do bring back Daryl Henderson. Uh, again, you see the the wherewithal there to um, you know slide and very Todd Gurley, very uh, you know Sean McVay esque to slide, stay in bounds at the end. I put that in there at the end, um, but it's important to me. Uh, it's important to me as a running back to have the little things. And this is what, you know, just going through his tape, this is what Kyron Williams embodies. Um, willing to do the little things, not really a care in the world as to how much work he has to put in. He's going to put that in. It's why coaches have fallen in love with him. It's why Rams scouts like him. It's why Sean McVay and, you know, the Rams brass decided to draft him. And not only just draft him, trade up to get him. Um, again, workhorse on and off the field. Uh, I think he's going to be a very good pro. His attention to detail, his willing nature to take on the dirty work of other backs uh, that simply won't put in that time uh, to get better at. I just think this guy is in for a very good, long, and healthy NFL career. He's got to stay healthy. Obviously, anybody playing this type of position has got to stay healthy because it is a grueling position. But what I've seen out of Kyron Williams in under 500 snaps, getting close to 500 snaps, but still under 500 snaps, is this is a guy that was managed pretty well, actually, at Notre Dame. He didn't have crazy usage, but when he was on the field, he made the most of said usage. He's, his ability in pass pro, his ability as a receiver, and his ability to run in between the guards and tackles. I think this guy is going to have a long NFL career, and I think he's going to have a good one with the Rams. Who knows if he lasts with the Rams past his rookie deal. That's way in the future. <clears throat> but right now, I come away thinking this guy can help you help basically help you win a Super Bowl and be a part of a really good running back stable in 2022 and beyond. So I gave this an A-plus grade. Obviously, you guys know where Alexis Kraft, my co-host of Downtown Rams, stands on this. But this guy, number 23, Kyron Williams, you're going to see a lot of. So I'm just saying that right now. We're three videos through the, this film room, and I just got to say, through the first three players, I already knew, but the Rams really knocked out of the park. The first three picks are magnificent to get, you know, Logan Bruss, who's going to be your right guard of the future, probably plug and play day one right guard starter and potential pro bowler down the line to get him in the end of the third round, which is really like a fourth round pick. And then the turnaround and get to Kobe Durant, who's going to be like a slot God for you uh, at the end of the fourth round, which is like a fifth round. And then the trade up, have the wherewithal to be like, I identify this player. I want this player. This is a guy that we really want. And to go up, trade up for him and, you know, get a guy that can help you in all these ways and really only fell because he's not the tallest and he's not the fastest. 
they really made do. They 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 really made do with this. Uh, this is a really really good pick. He's going to help them. Twenty one years old, Kyron Williams coming to a SoFi Stadium near you. But that's going to do it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Kyron Williams film room. We're out of here. Next up, Quinton Lake, our guy. Can't wait to break him down. But you guys take care, and I'll see you guys soon. Later.